Chris Lynch. He's a favorite here at the Improv. Uh, he tours all over. He's open for Dave Chappelle. Ray Romano is here for you now. Start clapping up, everybody, for Al Goodwin. Al! All right. Let's hear it for Brian again. Yeah? Awesome. I'd like to start off with an impression for you folks. This is my impression of the last guy on a potato chip assembly line. This is the job that the guy does at the final position of the conveyor belt in any potato chip factory in the world, all right? Here we go. That's the conveyor belt, just so you're with me, right there. second place on America's Funniest People for that joke a long time ago. And as a result, I actually got offered my first television commercial after I, after I got second place on America's Funniest People. And it was for the Antiques Roadshow, right? And I'd never seen the show. Yeah? I'd never seen the show, but they said, we want you to do the commercial. So I had to start watching it to figure out what it was about. If you haven't seen it, it's these people who bring their antiques on and these expert appraisers tell them how much it's worth. And there's only really two kinds of situations on that show, I found out. The first kind of situation is a guy who thinks he's got something really valuable, turns out, oh, not so valuable, right? And then the other kind of guy is somebody who doesn't know if his object is valuable, turns out, oh, priceless, right? And, uh, so the, the, the first time I saw it, I saw the guy who, who didn't know if his object, or no, he thought he had something really valuable, he thought he had a mini bags, right? And the expert appraiser was like, well, these markings are consistent with that time frame, and this upper flange looks like it's from that Ming Dynasty, but if you'll notice here on the bottom where it's etched made in Taiwan, right there, that's bad, okay? Because it's in English. And then I saw this other guy, and uh, he didn't, he, he was like the guy who didn't know how, what he had, he was like, uh, he was like, uh, He's like, I found this stick in my basement right here. It's like a carved stick with writing on it. What you think that's worth right there, that stick? And the expert appraiser was like, sir, this is the staff that was used by Moses to paint the books. You might want to put that in some bubble wrap. So then I, uh, I moved to New York City because that's what every comic has to do at some point in his life. Yeah, if you were from there, it's great places. It's a tough city, man. I had to learn how to survive in New York City, you know? And there are good te techniques I can give you. One of the uh, first things on my list of tips to give people, uh, avoid other people. I mean, that is way up there on my list, all right? And I learned a really good technique for avoiding other people in Times Square. Because right in Times Square, the people who you're trying to avoid are the pamphlet flyer people. Because they're trying to jam something in your face all the time, right? And what I learned to do, here's a good tip, ready? Carry something in both hands at all times when you were in Times Square. Because then you're full up, you can't accept anything, right? I always used to carry an umbrella and a handgun. I'm full up, all right? And uh, I, uh, I'm, I'm on the road a lot, and I'm away from my wife and, and kids a lot, and, and it's, it's kind of sad. I, I, some, I get so lonely, and, and uh, I'll admit it, like, one night I broke down, and I, I got one of those in-room adult movies, and uh, those, those movies aren't, like, uh, most, uh, you know, romantic relationships, I don't think. I don't think they accurately depict, not any that I've ever been in, at least, I mean, like the whole spanking thing, I mean, I've been married 13 years, I've never spanked my wife, right? And, and, and then I started thinking, maybe that's what we're missing, right? And, uh, turns out, nope! That is not what we're missing, right? That is really something you need to start early on in the dating process. You want to establish that. You don't wait 13 years to pull that one out of your bag of tricks. Because that'll spark some conversation. It'll be the talk you talk about when you goes down. She was like, what kind of into you? I was like, oh no. I saw it in the movie. Off. 
great. And I got two great kids, too. I taught my kids how to count the same way my parents taught me how to count. You know, the one, two, and you shouldn't do that, because when my daughter was in kindergarten, she called and said that she couldn't say four, she kept following three up with, get your ass over here right now. So, they repeat what they hear, you gotta watch out. My daughter is from my first marriage, and I have full custody of her, and, which is really hard to do, because I'm a lesbian. And um, she's, uh, she's 16 years old, and she's beautiful. I'm very overprotective as a dad. I had her tubes tied last week. I was kidding. They wouldn't do it. She's a great kid, but she's, she's got a lot of good common sense. More than I had when I was her age. You know, I was like, I was more of a partier, you know, when I was in high school. Yeah, which isn't good when you're dyslexic, because I would stand by that drug-free school zone sign for hours, just waiting. You know. My son, my son just got his uh, black belt in Taekwondo, which is amazing because he's only eight years old. And um, yeah, it's awesome. And I love my kids and, and I want my family to be safe. And, and um, like the other night I heard uh, a noise and it woke me up and I went to my daughter's room and I said, lock your door. And I went to my son's room and I said, wake up little man. I think someone's in the kitchen. <laughs> Sometimes I'm lucky enough to be able to bring my family with me on gigs, and it's great. Uh, except once, like when my son was um, little, he used to love Buzz Lightyear from Toy Story. He was in his Buzz Lightyear face, and he'd always pretend to be Buzz Lightyear, shooting his laser out of his arm, you know, like, choo -choo 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 -choo, which is cute. But there's a lot of Jewish people in the entertainment business, and the club I was working at, the owner of the club was Jewish, and some of you can see where this is going, right? I wish it happened out of the corner of my eye. By the time I saw what was happening, there was nothing I could do about it. My son was running to the owner's office and he was like, shh, shoo, 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 Thank God that owner had a sense of humor. By the time I got to his office, he was standing behind his desk going, Gentile, 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 Gentile. That worked out great. Thanks so much. Man.